the uplift of Earth's crust at Gibraltar caused a dam and the drying up of the Mediterranean Sea five million years ago. This is the Strait of Gibraltar that you see here in the sat image. That was a landmass, totally connected. And the Mediterranean Sea was actually dry. But before the uplift, of course, it was a sea and it contained water. But something happened. It was a tremendous earth change. And at that position, it had contained, it had created a landmass that caused the damming of the Mediterranean Sea. So the Mediterranean Sea dried up five million years ago. This is from phys.org, having to do with what we just uh, mentioned concerning the video before this one. The scientists found new evidence of how that dam broke and the Mediterranean Sea refilled with salt water. That was the Messinian salinity crisis. It was a crisis because the Mediterranean had, had become a dry lake bed, basically. So uh, what happened was the Atlantic Ocean did break through, causing it to go about a thousand times faster than the flow of the Amazon River. And basically in about two years it refilled. And I have to make a video concerning what happened to the Black Sea, because that at one point was... Um, filled with seawater as well. It could be that the Mediterranean sloshed over into that area as well. Now this is on uh, provided by the University of Utrecht of the Netherlands. It's on phys.org. It's uh, a 10 year old article but it's something that I, I didn't even know of and I think that perhaps you'd be interested in this too. The upward movement of the Earth's crust transformed the Straits of Gibraltar, making a dam, cutting off the Atlantic Ocean from the Mediterranean Sea. This happened about five million years ago, when the Mediterranean Sea dried up after it was sealed off from the Atlantic Ocean. According to the Earth scientist Rob Govers of Utrecht University in the Netherlands, a reduction in the weight on the Earth's crust led to the Straits of Gibraltar moving upward. A reduction of the weight in the Earth's crust. Could it have been uh, perhaps that an ice age had uh, just finished at that, uh, that area, that's maybe a pole shift? Who knows what happened? But they say it was a reduction of the Earth's crust made the Gibraltar area move upwards, creating a landmass. Govers will publish, well, I guess he's already published his conclusions in the issues of Earth Science Journal Geology. And much like a mattress brings back into shape after you get off it, he says, the Earth's crust moves upward when sea levels fall. This is known as isostasy. The phenomenon explains how the Mediterranean Sea was sealed off when the Atlantic Ocean five million years ago uh, was dammed, and this dam would remain in place for about 170,000 years. So it's not that much as far as geological time frames. So the dam was stayed in place for 170,000 years, much like today the rate of evaporation in the Mediterranean Sea five million years ago greatly exceeded the incoming flow of water. And as no more water was introduced through the Straits of Gibraltar, the water evaporated and the Mediterranean Sea dried up completely. After being separated for 170,000 years, the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean were once again connected. Govers believes that the movement of the Earth's crust played a crucial role. The African plate subducts under the Eurasian plate beneath Gibraltar and the weight of the subduction edge of the African plate may have pulled the entire region downwards. Govers submit CT scans of the inner layers of the Earth's crust and measurements of gravitational forces as evidence. Both the scans and the measurements indicate the presence of a heavy mass up to 400 kilometers beneath the area. 
Now, the Mediterranean Sea did fill up, and it took less than 10 years, according to a study on phys.org. Mediterranean Sea mostly filled in less than two years, and the flooding that took place about 5.3 million years ago, again, we talk about this in the Mycenaean Salinity Crisis video, it was the biggest mega flood on Earth, and it took place here from the sedimentary uh, examinations that they made from what they found from the uh, Malta area between Sicily and Malta in the Mediterranean Sea. According to the study published, seawater flooded in through the Strait of Gibraltar at a rate three times the current flow of the Amazon River. And the report published by the scientific journal Nature magazine about 5.6 million years ago as we said, Mediterranean Sea was disconnected from the Atlantic Ocean. It dried up by evaporation because of that, because the Strait of Gibraltar was a uh, connected landmass. It's not like it is today, which has a passage of water coming through. So the Mediterranean Sea totally dried up with evaporation and its largely saline surface between one and a half to uh, 3,000 meters below sea level, that's about 1,000 feet below sea level, the study said. So you can imagine, the Atlantic waters did find a way through the Strait of Gibraltar and rapidly did fill, refill the Mediterranean about 170,000 years later in an event known as the Zanclean Flood. Okay, that's the Mycenaean Salinity Crisis, the Zanclean Flood. Although the flood started at low water discharges that may have lasted for up to several thousand years, the results show that 90% of the water was transferred in a short period ranging from a few months to two years. Past studies suggested that it could have taken between 10 and several thousands of years to refill the Mediterranean Sea according to the depths of the Gibraltar Strait. Scientists led by Daniel Garcia Castellanos from Barcelona's Institute of Earth Sciences, John Almera, used borehole and seismic data to reveal a 200 kilometer long, that's 125 mile long channel, across the Gibraltar Strait, and that was carved out by the floodwaters, Nature magazine said. They used an incision model to estimate the, du the duration of the flood and reached their conclusions. He said, we do not envisage a waterfall, as is often present represented. Instead, the geophysical data suggests a huge ramp, several kilometers wide, descending from the Atlantic into the dry Mediterranean, like a ramp. Okay, a difference because it was a lot lower. This extremely abrupt flood may have involved peak rates of sea level rise in the Mediterranean for more than 10 meters a day. Garcia Calcedano says, uh, according to AFP, that even though the water flowed into the Mediterranean at huge speeds, it was at a relatively small angle of between 1 and 4 percent. The incision channel started tens of kilometers inside the Atlantic and seemed to slope gradually towards the center of the Alborian Sea, which is the Western Mediterranean. He said, we also know that the velocity of the water flow must have been more than 300 kilometers an hour. The abruptness of the flood may have triggered mainly by tectonic subsidence, after all, it's a subduction zone, as we know, and appeared to have been catastrophic because of its effect on the Mediterranean ecosystem and the climate. Studies of sediments show a marked change between the period of salinity, that's when it had salt water, and when uh, and there was little marine animal life, and the one immediately afterwards, which was characterized by a great number of species, of course, coming in, flooding in from the Atlantic. And as we said, this is uh, from uh, the, I'll leave a link below for the, uh, the uh, Mycenaean salinity crisis. Supposedly, the uh, event known as the Zankli Mega Flood, and it was supposed to be the greatest mega flood deposit on Earth, the largest known mega flood deposits on Earth.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.